guys, what's up? In this video, I want to talk about how you should actually get started with UX design and whether you should actually even get started with UX design in 2024. I know a lot of people may have these concerns, particularly, obviously, because of the new year. A lot of people make New Year's resolution about like, we have to do something and I don't even know what, whatever. But there is another concern about like, for example, AI and the push of AI that's been happening. And then on top of that, we have the recession. We have a bunch of firings that have been going on with the recent section 174 or whatever it is, with a lot of like larger companies actually laying off employees, not just designers, but obviously tech employees as well, project managers and stuff along those lines. So I want to talk about certain things about design and that design is also going to include UI design, UX design, e-commerce design, web design. It's just going to be any digital designer, basically. And we're going to talk about like what you should actually do in this time and age to actually get started in any of those fields of design. Particularly, I'm talking about UX, UI, web, mobile and interaction design and stuff related to that. I'm not talking about architecture design or industrial design or anything. It's more related to my field. So I actually have a bunch of notes here. Let me actually bring them directly in this screen so I'm more facing the camera. The first thing that we actually have to understand is we have to understand where the world is heading and it's heading towards automation. So the world has been heading towards automation since about like the industrial revolution. Some may even argue that it has been happening before that or since human history. But let's consider that the world is heading towards automation. I personally believe with the influx of AI and obviously the growth of AI, this automation is going to be even faster. I'm not concerned about the recession. I'm not concerned about like certain tax sections that actually have been causing layoffs and stuff along those lines. The most important concern that I feel like we should be concerned about is actually AI replacing designers. Now, there's a dumb quote that a lot of people actually keep on saying again and again. It says that AI will not replace designers or AI will not replace you. Someone using AI will. I mean, I just don't know how people come up with this stuff. Now imagine you have, I actually have a separate video if people want to check that out on my channel, but imagine you're a taxi driver, right? And someone says to you, hey, AI will not replace you, someone using AI will. Well, AI will definitely replace you once, you, once we actually have cars, when, when we have autonomous driving, obviously. It is definitely going to replace you. So that person's job is definitely going to be replaced. Similarly, there are a bunch of designers that are designers right now that do a bunch of these things. Like they create landing pages, they create components. There are design system designers that are particularly focused on design systems, right? There are designers that are particularly focused on creating illustrations. There are designers who are particularly focused on creating logos and all of that stuff. I feel like a lot of that stuff is automatically going to be replaced by AI quite easily. It is going to be replaced and I personally feel like it is going to be replaced in the near future. Now when usually, and that's the problem, when someone actually talks about how AI will not replace designers, they're, they're talking about a very specific designer, like a UX designer or a creative design lead or something along those lines that actually has frequent communication with the client, that actually understands their needs and goals and wants and desires and where they actually want to head and all of that stuff. But we have to understand designers actually do multiple jobs in an organization. You may have that creative lead that actually uh, understands and empathizes with users and then actually delegates certain tasks that are a bit laborious, that are a bit uh, monotonous. So they're definitely going to be replaced by AI. So, I mean, if you want to be irreplaceable or at the very least, least replaceable, try to go in the UX field or in the design field uh, as close to the user potentially or as close to the product, as close to the business because I feel like that's where you'll probably be least replaceable because it requires empathy, it requires connection, it requires understanding and all of that stuff which I feel like AI will replace or can potentially replace even if, it's, even if we don't say will replace but it's still going to be least replaceable compared to any monotonous tasks that are actually detached from the users. So that's the first point. Now coming to the second point, you have to decide what you actually want to do. Now based on what we've just talked about, you have to make sure like you actually have a clear path of where you want to go and how do you see yourself. Do you want to be a UX designer? Do you want to be a UX researcher? Do you want to go into UI design? <clears throat> just create landing pages, web designer, mobile designer, you want to be a UX researcher or a UX UI designer with a T-shaped 
uh, understanding of it or something along those lines. So that's something that you have to decide. Um, I don't think AI is actually going to replace you immediately. I mean, I've created videos of Framer AI of a bunch of different things and a bunch of these tools that actually do AI stuff. And I've talked about like how crappy they are, particularly Framer AI. Framer AI is not replacing landing page designers at the very least, not right now. But I mean, in the future, when AI actually starts studying and starts getting a sense of design, then it's actually going to improve and it's going to start doing that, which is undoubtable to me. Uh, so right now, it's not really at risk. You can be a web designer, you can be a mobile designer, you can be a UI designer, you can even be a design systems designer right now. But the more AI starts progressing, the more you are potentially going to be replaceable if you are disconnected from the user. So if I had to give you a suggestion, I would say probably again, as I mentioned, go first to the field that you actually want to pursue. Uh, you can be a web designer and still be very empathetic with the user and be connected to them, but don't just be a cog in the wheel. Try to be your own creative lead. Try to be someone who actually communicates with the client and all of that stuff and understands all of these things rather than just being a cog in a larger machine of let's say Google, Facebook and something along those lines where you don't even communicate with the client or stuff along those lines. So that's something that you have to decide. That's the second thing. Now coming to the third thing, once you've actually decided what you actually wanna do, you have to learn that particular thing, right? Uh, so where do you actually go to learn these things? Well, obviously we have popular websites like Nielsen Norman Group, we have Interaction Design, and both of these I've actually vetted and I've tested myself. And obviously you have Coursera and like Udemy and stuff, but I feel like uh, top notch quality content is actually on Nielsen Norman Group, then Interaction Design. And I've heard a lot about Memorizely, but I haven't really done any course from there, but I've done courses, a course from Nielsen Norman, I've done it from Interaction Design, and I've done some other courses as well. So I would probably consider both those two, Nielsen Norman Interaction Design, MM memorizely because I've heard a lot of good things about it. So those are the three websites that I would highly recommend for you to learn uh, UX, UI, web design, whatever it is. Now, whether you're a UI designer, whether you're a web designer, whether you are a, a researcher, obviously if you're a UX researcher, you're still gonna have that understanding of UX. Irrespective of what you wanna do, have a good understanding of UX principles, UX laws, which is law, which are laws of UX, or the 10 uh, usability heuristics by Nielsen Norman and stuff along those lines. So a great understanding of UX, I feel like is necessary if you actually wanna proceed in any field. It can be done without it as well. Even if you don't really have a good understanding of UX, you can still do it. But if you have a great understanding of UX, it's also gonna help you be even better in those fields and deliver actual results rather than just create pretty pages. A lot of the pages and a lot of the designs that you actually see on Dribbble, even mine, aren't really uh, focused on users. Some of those are conceptual designs, they look really good, they get a lot of likes, but I mean, perhaps they're not really solving the problem, particularly concept projects, because those are just to get and attract clients based on their aesthetic preference. So yeah, those are a few things that you actually should do. The other thing you should do is obviously you should learn a software where you're going to be designing and you're going to be uh, researching and consolidating all of that data and obviously synthesizing it and all of that stuff. And I think Figma is a great tool for that. I wouldn't really recommend any other tool, not Adobe XD, not Sketch, not any of the other tools that are coming, Lunacy or any other ones that are coming or UXPen. I would definitely recommend Figma because that's the benchmark of tools right now. And that's the most popular one. I have my own Figma course on YouTube, which is completely free if you wanna check that out. However, if you actually want more handholding, if you want to actually test yourself, if you want to go through exercises, do you want to go to quizzes, and you actually wanna be part of a community where people help each other and you can share your exercises and stuff along those lines, then definitely check out my Figma Noob to Pro course, which I'm going to link in the description as well. And you can use the AM subscriber key or voucher code to actually get a 50% off. So that's the other thing. <clears throat> Coming to the fourth point, you need to create and manage a portfolio. A lot of people actually just create a portfolio, they create some items and they just put it in there and they don't manage it. You have to keep on managing it and updating it as well. Now, <clears throat> when you're creating a portfolio, be specific about who you exactly are helping. So you have to pick a niche and you have to pick a domain which you're actually focusing on. I mean, just imagine, imagine you're going to buy sushi or you want to eat Chinese or something along those lines, right? Would you go to any restaurant that's basically mediocre in everything? Or would you, if you actually really wanna eat sushi or Chinese or a particular dish, would you actually go to the place that's 
proficient in that particular dish or that's well known for that particular thing. Ideally, you'll probably go there and spend a lot more money than just by going to a traditional restaurant um, and ordering uh, mediocre sushi or something along those lines, right? If you actually have a taste and a knack for sushi. S similarly, when people are actually creating or doing business, especially high tier clients, they actually don't want to do something mediocre. A lot of like cheap clients actually just want to get something mediocre and they just go to a generalist designer that's basically good at everything. He's going to do your logo for you. He's going to do your brochure design, your print design, your website design, your mobile application design, <clears throat> and basically every design on God's green earth. Probably, I mean, they just want to go to a person that can basically handle everything. And obviously, if you're handling everything, you're not going to be good at something. So if you actually want to attract the high tier clients, try to be good at one particular thing and actually showcase and position yourself like that. So are you a SaaS designer? Are you a SaaS landing page designer? Are you a e-commerce designer? If you actually do and manage a portfolio like that, and you also position yourself like that, like these are two different things, creating a portfolio and positioning yourself. I feel like I should actually break that down a bit. So it's create and manage a portfolio, and you should also position yourself. So consider both of those separate points. So you should position yourself as an authority on one particular domain and research on that, learn about that, be better in that, and attract clients that are particularly looking for that. And that's your one way to actually get great leads. Otherwise, you're just going to be a generalist and people are going to come to you for cheap work. I mean, if you're starting out and you, let's say, want to explore all of the fields because you're not really sure, by all means, be a generalist, like learn logo design, learn web design, learn SaaS design, whatever it is. And as you keep on uh, developing a knack or an interest in one particular thing, or you like the work that you're doing with particular clients, then probably position yourself as that. So yeah, that's the fourth or the fifth thing that I think you should probably consider and obviously keep on updating your portfolio based on the new items or the new projects that you keep on collecting. You actually do that and by your portfolio, I obviously mean your portfolio definitely should be on Behance, it should be on Dribbble, you should obviously have a website for yourself as well. And once you actually have that, I've actually personally experienced, like my wife is a designer as well. She like not necessarily a designer, but I actually was teaching her design and she started doing design for just a quick, just a short while and she kept on updating her portfolio and she started getting job offers. Even though she's just a beginner, she actually started getting job offers for a lead position as well in one case, I think. So, I mean, once you actually start publishing your work on socials, you are going to get recognized and then obviously you can use that to actually apply for tech companies as well and for other organizations and that's going to be a starting point of your career to actually start gaining experience but apart from that now coming to the fifth point which is building a reputation and following now this is one of the most extremely crucial and fundamental points that a lot of people don't really recognize and it actually ties in with the fourth point as well if you don't really pursue even if you're pursuing a niche even if you're learning something even if you're an expert in ux ui web design you're the best designer in the world but if you actually don't really put your work anywhere, which is the fourth point, or you don't really build a reputation around it or a following around it, you're not really going to get far because being the best designer isn't really uh, sufficient. You People should know that you're a great designer. People should know you're the best designer right now in that particular domain. And how are, you gonna, how are they gonna know that when they actually start seeing you in different of their social channels and social funnels? So you really need to focus on that. You have to post regularly and develop a brand and a recognition and a following. That is extremely important in today's age. Like Upwork is filled with Upwork, Fiverr, Freelancer and all of that stuff. It's filled with freelancers competing for attention right now. Uh, and I mean, it's way too crowded. It's really hard to get jobs there, especially if you're starting out, if you don't really have um, a great profile, if you don't really have good ratings. And I think what you should actually do is if you're as let's say you're developing as a SaaS landing page designer, you obviously would start creating your own concept projects. Nobody's going to give you a real project probably if you don't even have any portfolio. So you're going to start creating really awesome concept projects for SaaS landing pages. You're going to not only just do that based on what you like, but you're going to see what's really in in the market right now. What type of designs do actually clients like right now? And you're going to focus on that and try to come close to that and deliver things like that. As you keep on doing that, people are going to start following you. You're not only just going to be designing because as previously mentioned, I also talked about uh, the 
usability heuristics. I talked about laws of UX. I talked about UX research stuff and UX design. So you're also going to say why you're actually position, positioning certain elements in the page like that. Apart from just visuals, you're also going to show that you're actually thinking about that, thinking about how to make a landing page actually convert well, how should it sell well and all of that stuff. So as you keep on posting that, you're going to start getting followers who are actually going to admire your work. These are going to be designers. These are potentially going to be clients as well. And as you keep on posting your recognition and your brand as an authority in that particular space is going to increase. And obviously in order to do all of that, you have to study, right? You can't really do that just by applying on jobs. You have to study, you have to keep on learning. You have to keep on following amazing people who are actually much better than you. And you would learn from them and then the same would go both ways because when you actually start improving, other juniors are going to start learning from you and it's going to be, be a continuous chain and a cycle. So you're going to keep on doing that and you're going to develop a following and you're going to start get, getting work from there rather than just relying on these platforms. So that's something that you, you should actually do in 2024. Uh, if this was not 2024, I wouldn't really say this. If it was, let's say, 2020 or something along those lines, Upwork, Fiverr, and all of these different platforms were great. They weren't really as saturated or even earlier they weren't. But now it's time for actually for you to position yourself as an authority. So that's really important. The last thing that I actually like, this is a whole larger video, and I feel like I should have broken these topics down a bit deeper, and maybe I can in the future. But the last thing that I actually want to talk about, and there may probably be a bunch of other things that I can talk about, is the sixth thing. The sixth thing is that you have to be ahead of the curve. You have to keep on learning new things and learning the different technologies and trends that are coming out. So for example, currently there's a huge trend on Twitter and in the design space about like linear, like dark websites with a lot of like clarity and nuance in the little details and stuff along those lines. So I think if you again catch on that trend and start to design those things and actually be a pioneer in those things, that's going to be actually great because that actually helps you set yourself apart. Similarly, we have new technologies coming out. Spatial design is coming out. We have AI products coming out. So obviously a lot of companies are actually creating AI products. So if you have uh, concept projects even that are focused on AI, then it's very much likely that a lot of like AI oriented products are going to look for you for guidance, right? <clears throat> because you've specialized in that particular space. So it's really important to do that. And then we have new devices coming out as well, like the Rabbit R1 or like some other like AI pins or something along those lines. And I'm pretty sure this trend is going to keep on improving. And then obviously we have the metaverse. I feel like that's probably dying down, but you have to keep an open eye and you have to keep on looking at new avenues to actually better yourself and to see what's really in to keep on marketing yourself as a unique person and as a learner. And then obviously tap on these new opportunities that a lot of older designers or designers that are complacent or in the comfort zone wouldn't really do. They wouldn't really learn to do new things because they're not really that hungry. And even those people who actually are hungry wouldn't really do it because it's a lot of work. So those are just some of the guidelines that I feel like you should actually take by heart if you want to stand out and if you want to start in design in general. And yeah, I know it was a long video, but that's pretty much it. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.